Hey, hey, guys. I hope you enjoy this episode. It is a reflection of being 42. It's a little bit of a twist on the reflection of my business because this includes a lot of personal uh, reflection as my birthday is January 26th. So you guys tune in, listen to my reflection over the past year, and I hope you guys enjoy it. Need some effective tactical advice that actually helps you get results and makes a real difference in your life and business? You've come to the right place. If you're finding yourself here today, it means you're getting ready to gain serious traction in your business, rapidly multiply your income and impact, and you're ready to make it happen while living all out. Guys, I'm Melissa Henault, your trustworthy corporate dropout turned six-figure business burnout turned happy and healthy CEO of a multi-million dollar online business. And you're listening to the Burnout to All Out podcast. On this show, we're serving up innovative growth strategies, simple implementation methods to put them into practice, and action-stimulating inspiration tailored specifically for the modern entrepreneur. Let's dive in. Hello, Burnout to All Out community. I am so excited for this bonus episode. If you are joining me live on LinkedIn, I'm streaming live this episode a couple of weeks early. It's my birthday episode. It will be dropping on my birthday. So if you're watching live or you catch this in the feed on LinkedIn, know that this is my birthday episode for January 26th. So excited to really just take this episode and make it a reflection of the last year of life. What was 42 for Melissa Hinault? Yes, I'm 42 years old. So excited. It was actually really fun to brainstorm and write this episode. And it's, wow, it's just full of tremendous gratitude more than anything. So here's the thing. 42 was a year of intention. I'll never forget heading out to Disney World with the family, which was a huge part of 42, was more experiences and fun with the family. And I remember I was already in the throes of training for my triathlon, but I remember coming home. It was late January, early February, and just being so ready for so many radical changes and accountability for myself, for my health, for my wealth, for my happiness. And I knew that it all hinged on me, nobody else. It all hinged on a domino effect of individual actions and decisions that I was going to make throughout the year, who I was going to invest in to be at the table with, what I was going to invest in with my nutrition, what I was going to invest in myself for my physical health, who I was going to invest in, who was going to work with me, all those things. I sat down and got super effing intentional. I I remember it like it was yesterday, literally driving home from Disney World, even though I'd had so much fun in Disney World, felt just like stuffed and tired from just slepping through the concrete and the sun. We had, well, let me rewind and say we had so much fun in Disney World, but physically I felt gross. I was at an all-time high in my weight since having my last baby And I was consuming more alcohol than I had in years. And it was just, I know some of you guys have had those moments. It was a moment in the car where I was like, I am so ready to make so many radical changes. And on that ride home, my husband was driving. I downloaded apps like Reframe to help me with really doing away with alcohol. I downloaded an app called Nom to help me really start tracking. Even though I ate healthy, I was overeating all the healthy foods, right? And I invested in a mastermind. I mean, I could go on and on and on about the radical things that I just did one after another, domino, 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 decision after decision after decision, right? And that was the beginning of January, right? That was for all intents and purposes, it was literally right after my birthday in late January. So what transcended? What what came out of all of that last year? And the reflection of it is super cool. You know, I realized coming home from Disney World that I was looking at my son, my oldest, and realizing that I had less time with him in the house moving forward than time he'd already spent with me in the house. And I know those of you of parents of littles think they'll stay little forever, right? Like the the days are long, but the years are short. And it hit me square between the eyes and the soul 
that I really wanted to make life about experience and about memories. And I wanted to stop being in survival mode. And I wanted to start being able to embrace the beauty of this earth, embrace the beauty of my family, embrace the beauty of the freedom lifestyle I had created for myself and just get out of the tumbleweed of the hustle, right? So my year of 42 was about a couple of things. And I'm going to recap them all for you here in this in this episode. But I just wanted to start with this aha moment of this vision of me coming home from Disney World, although in late January, early February, and although being fully satisfied of the life experience with my children and knowing it was something I needed to do more of, I also felt about the grossest I've ever felt in my own physical body from two years of entrepreneurship beating me up physically, mentally, all the things, right? It's just a, such a profound moment when you're ready to make a radical change. So how, what happened at that turning point at 42? Well, my focus was getting healthy again after those two years of entrepreneurship. And I will say, and I hope some of you are listening to this and send me a DM if you can relate to this. couple things. It is pertinent when you're scaling a business that you will have to make sacrifices. I don't regret where I ended up in my health because it took me on a journey that was necessary to scale my business. And what I mean by that is we, you know, we speak to all this self-care. We speak to making space for yourself. And it's not, it's not always the spa and the massages and all those things. There's so many other pieces to self-care when it comes to mindset and space for yourself and setting boundaries. But where I'm going with this is you will never get a business up off the ground if you don't hustle, okay? So hear me out. I don't regret that I got a little floppy those two years. I don't regret that I had to make tough decisions to get my business off the ground. That is what makes entrepreneurs successful. And if you're not in it to lean in and get shit done, you're not going to be successful. So that's the tough love, Melissa, coming at you. But what I do want to express to you is that it's not sustainable. Is it pertinent and necessary to get a business off the ground to burn the midnight oil, to burn the candle at both ends? Most would say yes. I would venture to say that you're not going to sit at a table with any extremely wealthy, successful person and then say, well, you know, God, that was about the easiest thing I've ever done. I mean, I just laid back and it just happened for me, right? Doesn't happen. But what I want to say is that there has to be a tipping point like there was for me when you realize this is no longer sustainable. I've got my business up and running. Now I need to optimize and I need to take care of myself and I need to optimize my team, right? Okay. So that's my, that's my caveat. And that was my turning point last year was, okay, I have busted my ass and now let's make some changes. Okay. Number two, was work less and make joy a priority first. Okay, again, I'm here to tell you when you first are launching your business, you may not want to take 12 weeks of vacation that year if you plan on being successful, okay? But what I am saying is if you've been in this for a while and you're not prioritizing joy, you will burn out, right? You will burn out. And that's what I realized when we came home from Disney was this was so much fun. And this is why I work so hard. And this is why I own my calendar, right? Why am I not making this more of a priority? I was so focused on making my business a success, which again is absolutely necessary to get your business up off the ground. So hear me out. I'm not saying if you're listening to this and you haven't started your business yet, and you're saying, oh my gosh, Melissa's saying I've got to work way less. I've got to fill my day with joy. Yeah, I think you need to sprinkle it in when you're first starting your business because otherwise you will burn out. However, there is a time and a season for it. And know that if you're going to scale and grow a business, there are going to be months of hustle. I want to say it again, hustle. I am all about promoting the modern entrepreneur this year. And it is going to be a huge piece of what I talk about and how we manage our energy, how we manage our happiness, and how ultimately it's a trickle-down effect in our business. But I'm, I'm going hard on this right now because I want to underscore that even though I'm speaking 
to all these modalities and how important it is. Know that there's a fair balance. And when you're first getting your business up and running, you may have to hustle a little harder to earn the right to own your calendar with joy and freedom. Earn the right to work out for two hours a day, right? So I hope that makes sense. You get your business up off the ground and then for the rest of your life, you can choose when you want to exercise, where you want to go, when you want to go and how you want to do it, right? Okay, that is my disclaimer before I move forward. The third thing I focused on was getting rid of toxicity and negative energy in my life. People that worked for me, people I was connected to, relationships, friendships, family, right? All the things. And then the last focus in my 42nd year of life was staying steady with my profit margins and profit in my business while making these changes. The year of 42 was about how can I continue to create the same revenue, but be healthier and happier, work smarter, but not harder, which is a huge piece of a future iteration of this year in my my age of 43, right? And also, how can I start investing some of the money I'm making into a long-term asset? How can I take 10% of profit every single month habitually and commit to that and invest in an income-producing asset that's going to make my money work harder for me than I had to work for it to come to me. I think that should be every entrepreneur's goal, right? Otherwise, we're just employees, right? Okay, so here is how 42 panned out. I went on two Disney trips, one with my kids, one with my mastermind fellow cohorts, and it was a blast. One was at Disney World, one was at Disneyland. Family trips, And this is where I say you just have to get intentional and make it happen. I went on so many trips last year. I went to Carmel with my girlfriends to write a book. I did a solo road trip for the very first time with my older children and took them down to spend a week with my aunt and uncle at the lake in Alabama. And it was such an experience. I learned that my kids like to paddleboard and ride jet skis. Had our first solo family camping trip with all five of us and the dog, the new dog. We packed up the car and we took a week long trip to New Hampshire. Actually, we flew. Sorry, we didn't pack the car. All five of us uh, went to New Hampshire for an entire week to spend with family. We took countless weekends. I couldn't even count it all up. Long weekends up to Eagle's Nest and Banner Elk, which is where our property is that we bought that, yes, I was able to take 10% of my profits this past year and invest it in a property where my goal at the age of 43 is to now build on that property and create the income-producing asset, the short-term rental. More on that later. We took an adult trip. My husband and I went to Boca Raton, just the two of us. It was incredible. For the first time in years since COVID, I put a stake in the ground and hosted, brought back our friends, white elephant party, no kids allowed. I went, you know, just pulled out all the bells and whistles, brought in a caterer, served amazing food. It was such a cherished experience. And that's what we're here on this planet for, right? We're humans. We're here to connect and love and support and engage and have these memories together and laugh and cry and support each other. And so that connectedness and taking responsibility and hosting that again and bringing it back just brought so much life back into me, especially being a solopreneur kind of working from home and talking to you guys virtually all the time and and not having as much human connection as someone in an office. It was priceless. We hosted a 4th of July party with over 40 people at our house with a massive, massive setup of fireworks. And here's the thing, you know, I reflect upon it. I can't even tell you how many days of vacation I actually took, but it was extensively more than I was ever able to take in corporate, which brings me to our plans for this year. My husband and I sat down last night to plan all of our vacations next year. And he's like, I can't take all this vacation time. Like you're going to have to figure out what I can come to and what I can't. And that was the realization of massive appreciation and gratitude for leaving the corporate space and betting on myself because I'm now seeing how it's panning out and being able to make joy a priority and not having to work my life around my business 
but work my business around my life. So we'll figure out what trips Jake can take and what trips he can't take. But you better bet I'm going. All kinds of cool trips ahead. But a huge part of the joy factor here is making a conscious choice to make many special moments with your family. You know, I've had a lot of people say to me this year, you just, your energy is different. You just look healthier. And yeah, I've been doing a plant-based diet. Yeah, I've been exercising. We can talk about that too. But I do think that seeking out and prioritizing joy may have even more to do with my energy this year, this past year. And then consciously and deliberately choosing the rooms that I'm in and connecting with those high vibe people, right? So, you know, creating that joy factor with my family, being conscious about it and planning it and prioritizing it was so huge that it's the first thing I did this year. But then also consciously knowing who I'm sharing a room with in a mastermind. My best girlfriends from a mastermind, we've already planned a girl's trip this year that's totally not business related, right? So making that conscious choice to share my energy with the right people and make a conscious choice for those authentic connections and making laughter matter. Like you guys may laugh, but I like purposefully watch things at night if I'm going to watch TV at all that make me laugh with the kids, right? Because I just think laughter is so good for you. Okay, so that was joy. What else happened for 42 for me? Health. I lost 20 toxic pounds and regulated my nervous system. You guys, I completed my first half marathon in over 10 years. And it actually wasn't until after the marathon that I discovered this fermented plant-based detox that I am obsessed with. I'm actually on a seven-day detox right now. I lost about 10 pounds training for the half marathon. I lost another 10 with the plant-based diet and the plant-based detox and intermittent fasting that I've incorporated. I became a student of meditation and manifestation. And I was so obsessed with it that I actually became certified in hypno breath work, which is an incredible modality to unblock your subconscious and create massive breakthroughs in life and business. Family, let me give you some updates on my family during my year of being 42. I finally, maybe this is why I'm healthier. I no longer have a preschooler. My son, my youngest, went off to kindergarten. So the first, for the first time in my life, I have all three kids at the same drop off and pick up moms who take the responsibility to manage the kids in the morning and evenings know what a huge life changer this is from being able to start my days at nine because drop off at the school was so late at preschool to now jumping into my routine at 730 in the morning because everybody's out the door, right? That was huge. Not to mention he can make his own breakfast now. We got a new puppy. Like how much joy that dog has brought into my life. He is my work buddy. He's sleeping right behind me. He's just so cuddly and just brings so much joy. As far as family goes, you know, even Jake had an epic year this year. My husband, I'm so excited. I'm actually bringing him in as a guest on a future podcast. I recently read something about power couples and how synergistic it can be for your own success and relationship. And I don't really talk a lot about my husband's career, but I have to brag about him for a second. He was a year or two ago was appointed an entire new business unit that he built from scratch uh, within his company. And, and they scaled it to over 19 million a year in less than two years. So you guys think that I know what I'm doing. I live in a house with a man who's very powerful and has incredible leadership skills. And we bounce ideas off of each other all the time. And so that has been so fun to watch over the past year with him and be able to really have in-depth conversations about business and learn from each other. So that's that was super cool. And then from a family standpoint, again, you know, finally investing in that land to now build this home that's going to create so many memories with our family in process while, you know, the build process may take 18 to 24 months. We actually purchased a camper this past month so that we can have all these family experiences now and we can go up to the land and the property and camp out until the house is built. And we're already mapping out all of, we're going to do a two week trip out West while we have the camper. We've already got mapped out up in the mountains and the lake and down by the beach, even the Florida Keys have some really cool camper places. So all is like a positive feedback loop 
of like this joy and this happiness and this fulfillment and like why we're on this planet in the first place. Yeah. So that's a little bit about, you know, family journey at the age of 42 as a mom with three kids. And then we move into business. And we've already talked a little bit about business already at the very beginning when I talked about just my intention in 2022 and, you know, that reflection turning 42 right at the turn of the the year of being really, really intentional with, you know, how I was executing. So from a business standpoint, it's really cool to have published a book at 42 that was a bestseller. And it was such an incredible experience that I've now implemented it into my own mastermind. And we get to meet together in February and kick off our co-author book writing process with our first book to come out about living all out with these incredible entrepreneurs in my community. Oh my gosh, I spoke on countless stages across the country, meeting so many incredible humans. And I hosted my own very first in-person event at my house. Like this was still kind of in the thick of COVID. We had an incredible group come. It was epic. It was intimate. And from there, it gave me the confidence to host an in-person public event in Charlotte, which sold out. And I learned so much from that. You can catch the previous episode on that. And I had my first press release. And actually today I have an interview with the news. So if you're listening to this, I haven't actually turned 43 yet. So by the time you listen to this, when I turn 43, I'll have had a news feature, a press release and a book release that's a bestseller, which is just crazy. It's just crazy to think about. If this mom of three who launched a business in the throes of COVID by locking herself in her bedroom for three hours, three days a week, because that's all the childcare I had, if I can do that and be here today, I promise you, you can too. It is a choice every day. It is such a choice. (sighs) Okay. Last thing, cutting toxicity. This was huge. I had to make conscious decisions to remove people from my team who maybe they were good individual contributors, but they were negative to the rest of the team. And after a Herculean effort of years of battle with drug addiction with my sister, years of sleepless nights in the ICU with her from overdoses, years of trying to take her to rehab, get her help, I came to a really tough decision at the end of last year that my children deserved to get more of my energy and my time than my sister and that I could no longer give her the energy and the space that I'd held for her. And that was a difficult decision, but a freeing decision that to really tell her, I love you. You are my only sister, but I have to let you know that I am done. I can't take long weekends with these Herculean efforts to revive you, to rehabilitate you, to help you one more time. And In that energetic exchange, I'm missing soccer games and birthday parties and events with my children. And it was a tough decision. And I don't wish it on anyone. But from a mental health and physical health standpoint and joy and happiness with my family, it was the right decision for me. And she is now in a home and she seems to be doing fairly well, which is awesome. She's at least not on the streets. My alcoholic father, who I've always had a broken relationship with, passed away It was really sad to see him leave this planet. I think the hardest part about it was maybe two things. One, that I would never actually have the child-parent relationship I'd hoped for, that he was never going to be healed, that that relationship after 43 years or 42 years of wishing would change. Never would because he was gone. It was also sad in my soul that... I knew how broken his soul was, that he had chosen the life and the path that he had chosen because of a lot of trauma that had happened to him as a child. And I had a lot of sympathy, sadness for him. So that was difficult. But in the same light, immediately, there was no longer the tension and the stress and the disappointment of the lack of phone calls at birthdays or lack of showing up over the holidays or a conversation that was a drunken slur and he doesn't remember anything. So that broken relationship is gone. It's removed from my life. And I made the conscious decision to bring the best parts of him forward, which actually was the theme of my year. Like, how cool is this? 
I did hypno breath work at the passing of my father, Rebecca Cafiero held the space for me to help me work through my emotions of his, his leaving me. And the thing that came forward for me during my breath work was how can I bring the best parts of him forward through the next generation? How can I not be so mournful and sorrow, sorrow, sorrowful, is that a word for who he wasn't? but bring forward the seeds of who he was. And if there's one thing my father was, he was the life of the party. He was funny. He was fun. He was the dad. He might've been drunk, but he would jump off the diving board. He would go jet skiing with you. He'd pull you behind on the jet skis. He might've been drunk. I'm glad I'm still alive. But he was up late having fun, playing pool with me, playing board games with me. Yes, he was nine times out of 10 intoxicated, but he was hilarious and he was fun. And those are the memories I'm bringing forward with me with my children, which is how can I bring Preston Andrews and his laughter and his fun in a healthy way forward to my family, right? And I remind myself of that. Like when we're in the pool and I'm sitting in the hot tub and the kids are like, mom, come swim. And I'm like, I don't want to get my hair wet or I'm really enjoying the hot tub. I'm like, what would Preston do? Preston would cannonball into the pool and he'd play tag with the kids, right? So it's a conscious decision. It was a a sorrowful journey, but I can smile and know that like the best of him is within me and the best of him is within my kids. Okay. That was like a soapbox, but, and the last thing I did is I totally dropped participation and direct sales altogether. Some of you know that what got me out of corporate altogether was building a direct sales company. I had made, I won't say the wrong decision. It created the journey and the path I'm on today, but I chose to leave one company and go to another thinking the opportunity would be huge. And what I learned was that the leadership at the company and the culture and the women were so toxic and so competitive and unlike anything I'd ever experienced in my life. It's a really tough journey for me. I've actually debated on making an entire podcast on it, but I'm just not sure I want to give the energy to it. But the bottom line is from that journey, what I learned is that I don't need to attach myself to any company to be wildly successful. And by releasing that company, I was able to work less, have more joy in my life, be healthier and make a million dollars this year, right? And so it was such a lesson for me, but it was a lesson that had to happen. I feel like the universe put me through the ringer on that because I needed to learn that I didn't need to be there. And if it had been easy and I was like a joyful ride, my attention would have been split between continuing to launch that company and to launch my brand. And so I believe the universe threw me the curveball on purpose because it always does. And there's always blessings in the lesson, right? So much about life is learning what you don't want, right? And what you're not good at or what doesn't energetically align to you. So here's the thing. Four to two was about holding steady and recalibrating. I'll bet we weren't planning. Well, we were. I was still shooting for a million in sales. I wasn't sure I was, if it was going to pan out because I knew I was dialing back what I was doing and when I was doing it. But that's the crazy thing. When you only prioritize and only do things that are an absolute hell yes and everything is a hell no, you now open up so much more space for the few things you've chosen. Health, happiness, family, right? And if it doesn't align to any of that, it's a hell no. And it made me more available for the things I was spot on working on and being more available for my clients, more available for my team, more available for my family because they were the priority, right? So that was 42. Ah, What does 43 have? Like, let's look forward to 43, which is uh, if you're listening to this episode that's being dropped, it I just turned 43. If you're watching me live, it's in a couple of weeks. But as I look to 43, what I'm looking for is more expansion while pulling forward what I learned this past year that worked, which was that I hustle every day, all day, is what it takes to get a business off the ground. But ultimately, it will plateau your business and maybe even drive you into the ground if you don't recalibrate once you get the momentum up and running. And now it's about taking care of me as the CEO and really keeping the main things, the main things and not getting distracted that I'm taking with me into 2023. I'll continue to weekly fast on a quarterly basis. I'll do a seven day fast each week. I fast once a day, once a week. I mean, uh, one day a week I'm doing another half marathon. And my goal is to be faster, 
fitter and healthier than ever, ever. Mark my words. My youngest is only five. I'm going to be an old grandparent, right? I want to be around, crawling around the floor with his kids, tripling my business this year while staying happy, healthy, wealthy. Yeah, let's see. Let's see that happen. International trips with my kids, trips with my husband. Gosh, my calendar's full. I'm looking at going to Bali, start construction on the new home, more live events, not just for business, but for friends and for free to give more, become an investor in a good deal. I want to invest in a business this year and I'm going to build a short-term rental property. Hold me to it. And I'm going to impact more lives than ever as I lean into the modern entrepreneur I'm becoming by sharing with you the modalities that are working for me and inspiring you. You know, the first 40, the first 42 years of my life have been about survival. From the moment I came out of the womb and the environment I was born into, it was about survival. And it was a pattern ingrained in me. And as I pivot into 43, it's about giving. It's no longer about surviving and protecting me. It's no longer about just getting by and, 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 and being successful. It's about giving back. And so I can't wait to bring more to you guys. And I'm so glad you were able to listen to this episode on my reflection of my 42nd year of life. If anything really resonated with you or you have any questions about it, feel free to message me. I hope you guys have an amazing day. Thanks guys so much for listening in on today's podcast episode. I can't wait for you to see my upcoming guest in the next episode. You are going to love this keynote speaker. Hey, here's the deal. If you liked this, please subscribe and leave a review. And you want the latest online business growth strategies and exclusive LinkedIn pro tips sent straight to your phone? Text the word UPDATES to 1-833-310-7171. Again, text the word UPDATES to 1-833-310-7171. Can't wait to see you guys. Come find me over on Instagram, LinkedIn, Facebook, wherever you like to hang. I cannot wait to hear how you are enjoying and applying what you're learning. You guys reach out to me over on social because I love hearing what's resonating with you. When you reach out to me and you send me those personal DMs, they really do impact the content I continue to bring forward to you. So again, come find me, Melissa underscore Hinault over on Instagram, Melissa Hinault over on LinkedIn and Facebook. Can't wait to see you guys over there.